Hi, y'all. Welcome to the DIY Musician Podcast. My name is Via Perkins, and I'm super excited to be hosting the podcast for the first time ever. For those of you that don't know me yet, I joined the CD Baby team back in January as the Senior Communications and Content Manager for the marketing team. And I actually started using CD Baby as an artist over 10 years ago. So now being able to work for a company that I've known and loved for such a long time, it's really a dream come true. So today's episode is focused on navigating personal branding as an artist. If you're a musician who is releasing music, figuring out how you want to present yourself in ways that feel really true to you, but also come across really well, make a great impression. This should be super helpful for you. And I have the privilege of having three guests on who curate, review, and interview in the artists across a ton of genres. And they're going to share their wisdom and expertise on how to get noticed by folks like them, how to get your music featured, how to really make a name for yourself in your community. Also, all the guests and their platforms, along with everything that we talk about today, will be linked in the podcast description. So I highly encourage you to follow them, check out the resources that we'll chat about today, and just enjoy the episode. So let's go ahead and dive in. You're listening to the CD Baby. CD Baby. CD Baby. DIY Musician Podcast. Hello, hello. Welcome to the DIY Musician Podcast. I am thrilled to have you three in the virtual room with me. You've all played incredible roles in highlighting indie artists across genres who really deserve more of an audience. And you do that through everything from in-depth reviews to thoughtful interviews. And you've all either curated platforms or help run platforms that have tens of thousands of followers who really admire what you do and find new music through you all the time. And similarly, today we're speaking to thousands of indie artists who um, would really benefit from learning from you all. So I'm a huge fan of all of yours and I'm sure our audience will be as well once they hear more from you. So with that said, let's hop into a round of intro starting with Annabelle. Hey, um, my name is Annabelle. Um, I'm the founder of the platform That Good Shit. Um, my favorite thing in the world is creating online community around great music and supporting indie artists, which is why we're here. Um, I'm a DJ as well. And yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Of course. And Day, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, hello. Um, it's a pleasure to be here as well. My name is Day. Um, I'm the founder of the social media platform at Rabbit Hole, where I dig deeper with music. Um, the important thing that I always like to incorporate with my blog is highlighting artists and creatives who um, deserve, you know, that recognition. And, you know, as a former student athlete, um, just kind of transitioning to this level of Digging deeper with music has definitely something that has been very exciting and something that I'm looking forward to learning from you three. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Malia. Yeah, amazing. Um, yeah, I'm also so excited to be here and learn from you guys as well. Um, my name is Malia. Uh, I host Sleep Notes, which is a podcast produced by the Luna Collective magazine, um, which is a publication that highlights um artists across the industry um and on the podcast i interview artists indie um and otherwise and we just yeah have conversations in an explorative way and i get to know them better and through that i think the audience gets to know gets to know um like uh the way the industry works in an interesting way um and outside of that i also uh, write for the Luna Collective and another publication called Stage Taste. And I've been doing that for just over a year. Awesome. So as we get into this conversation, I would love to start with how each of you find artists, because I'm sure a lot of musicians are following you and saying like, man, this review is so great from day. Like I'd love to be featured on a rabbit's hole someday, or I'd love, you know, a chance to talk to Annabelle or Malia about my music. So my first question for y'all is what makes an artist distinctive to you and makes you want to interview them or feature them? Mm. I'll go first, I guess. Um, 
So I, the way I discover artists is, of course, through Spotify and Apple Music, um, digging deeper with that way. But also, um, and I'm sure everyone else can agree, it's really about the online community and how, like, when you highlight one artist, it kind of builds a snowball effect. Mm-hmm. And so I have multiple artists that reach out to me that showcase their music. Like, even though I may not feature everyone, the important thing that I always do is I listen to all their music and I always e- email them feedback. Because that's just something that I feel like, for me, I have a diligence to do. Like, I feel like I always got to, like, recognize and show recognition to their music. But as far as, like, how I really go about highlighting artists, um, I, first of all, care about artists who are, like, passionate about their work. Like, you can see that in their craft. Like, they actually put some effort into it. Like, I don't really care about how many followers they have or how well they're doing on social media. I really care about who they care about their art. Or they try to make their art timeless. That's the important thing that I incorporate with a rabbit hole. Totally, yeah. I think going off of that, I I totally agree with what Day just said. Um, I think if an artist, I'm I'm I I think if an artist is has a clear creative vision, that's super important, and like the storytelling aspect of it is also important. So like if an artist um, pitches me with like the story of how their music came together or um, just building out their world through maybe like accompanying visuals or something. If it's like clear that there's a lot of intention, um, Mm -hmm. I would say that that is, it's, that's definitely the most compelling I would say. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree with what you both said. I think like world building is super important for me. So I agree whenever an artist pitches their music and I see like, maybe the cover art and like accompanying visuals are like really beautiful and um, create like a really interesting world that's going to drive me to want to dive deeper and listen to their music in terms of the more like mechanical stuff of how like I discover, I discover music through like a bunch of different ways. Um, Like I have a discord for that good shit where we have submissions open and I go through those all the time. Um, We run aux battles on the that good shit discord where we have artists come in and do like little Um, like a little competition like playing songs back and forth and we like vote and do brackets so that's a really fun way I've been discovering obviously through like um, Spotify like discovery tools always very helpful and I think for me my favorite way to discover music is um, through like friend recommendations I have so many friends with really incredible music tastes and they're always putting me on to um, small artists like way early um, and it's really cool to be able to have so many friends who are also as like passionate and tapped in about indie artists and rising artists so that's really important and also I feel like I discover a lot of great music from rising artists like when I meet people outside like at events or just like in the street mm-hmm. and people come up to me and they're like I'm an artist I make music I found some incredibly talented artists that way as well yeah I'm definitely sensing a thread throughout all three of your answers around community it's like You find one artist and then it's easier to find another and another and they're sort of vetted by the people that you care about and that you're talking about music with all the time. So um, we'll definitely get into more of that later in the um, podcast. But I also wanted to ask, so, you know, as you know, there are tons of platforms that you can use um, to get discovered by tastemakers like y'all. Groover is a great one that CD Baby partners with, for instance, but there's lots of them. You can make connections through social media. You know, you can do email pitching, in-person events. So what's the best way for artists to get discovered by you and how can they impress you when you have a chance to connect with them? Annabelle, take this one away. <laughs> take that one away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I don't know. I feel like I don't rely as much on, like, third-party platforms for discovery. I feel like I mainly do most of my discovery just through, like, the most popular social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, um, TikTok. I feel like that's how I find most people. And, again, I think it really ties back into community, like, whether it's in the comment section or, like, in stories, um, people sharing like what they're listening to. That's kind of my my main um, my main mode of discovery. SoundCloud. I love SoundCloud. I am always digging on SoundCloud and finding cool stuff on there as well. Um, I always go through. If you go on SoundCloud, you can look at people's likes, 
And so I always go to like artists I love or DJs I love or friends who have great taste and I'll go stalk their likes. And that's how I find people. But I mainly uh, stick to discovery through like the more popular like um, social media platforms. And again, Spotify, that's my go to. Yeah. yeah and spotify playlist like i'm i do the same thing as annabelle but i go to like people that i know have good taste in music and i just like peruse their playlists that they've made um and i think that's how i found a lot of great rising artists for sure pretty much what all of them touched on um i kind of discover artists the same way um and i kind of receive that like i also focus on my my actual like community because i'm in the bay area i'm in california so i also focus on being rooted in that area you know going to different uh mixers going to different events that really help me discover new artists that way but off of spotify and soundcloud which is interesting what both of you guys brought up soundcloud could definitely use a better ui but i like soundcloud as well but um, with Spotify, I feel like Spotify for me hit a personal connection because I also do these deeper dig series with artists where we collaborate on playlists. And, you know, it kind of gives me a better understanding of their work while also raising a new audience. Because when I have an artist who submits their like, you know, their favorite artist, like, for example, I just did a recent one with Static and um, he submitted mostly like a lot of R&B and a lot of smooth jazz in a playlist and you know like it provides a new perspective on how his music can be viewed and Mm -hmm. i feel like for me that's why i really like about using you know music platforms like not outside of just instagram using music platforms like apple music and stuff like that like they also have for apple music they have like these cool canvases where like you click on an album and the album moves like on the album cover and you know annabelle kind of touched on album covers as well and that's something that i'm like really like excited to see whenever i see like a new artist release how does that play a factor like schoolboy q's blue whips it looks so sick on that and so that's why i mainly get excited about for sure Mm -hmm. totally um i think going off of that um a practical way that artists can get in contact with um be it like music journalists or um people posting on blogs and stuff um going to like smaller blogs they usually have just emails for writers um so a thoughtful email can go a really long way i'm i'm always checking my email and i'm always getting pitched um new music from uh indie artists um so making sure that you have like easy links to your music and your socials um in the email saying something about the project um and what it means to you and sharing maybe like a quick anecdote about um, how it was made or just sharing why it matters to you that people hear it. Um, I would also say, yeah, in, in, in terms of community, like gigging your heart out, you have to, if, if you have access to it, you should be playing music live with in community with other musicians. Um, cause I'm constantly going to shows around Brooklyn. Um, and that's how I've discovered some of my favorite artists. Um, and then, yeah, I think when chatting with artists, I'm most engaged when um, they're talking about why they make what they make. Um, mm-hmm. So just like being willing to be open and vulnerable and honest um, when we do actually come to having the conversation um, is super important. Yeah, that ties in really well with my next question, which is, you know, say there's an artist who caught your attention and you're setting up an interview with them or you're going to cover their music. Um, And I'm particularly interested in like when an artist is being interviewed, you know, it's like they have to show a side of themselves that allows the audience to get to know them. And at the same time, like also stand by what they say because it's on the internet forever, which is like terrifying. But also it's a really cool opportunity to share more about your values and your creative process and all sorts of stuff. So how would you suggest that artists prep before their interviews? And do you have recommendations for dealing with nerves? For me, yeah, I always try to, you know, capture who they are as a human before I really capture their work as an artist. That's Mm. why I always begin my first question is like, how are you define yourself as a human? And, you know, it gets so repetitive 
And I get so many people responding to me about like, oh man, well, you don't know, ask the first question. And I'm like, yeah, I know, let me get to it. But um, yeah, I feel like when you're able to just kind of like talk to them rather um, in the beginning about who they are as a person rather than talking about their work as an artist, you kind of get the transition where they start talking about their work freely. Because I feel like there's nothing more exciting than when an artist has too much to say about their work. Because that means they let you in. That means you're able to really kind of understand like more of who they are as the artists and how they go about their day to day life. Because that's what I really try to capture with a rabbit hole. Like as far as writing and as far as using my writing on like a like more technical level, I mean, I try to focus a little bit on that so that way my audience can get more stronger understanding. But I don't really incorporate that as much rather than like with the emotional aspect. So. Whenever like I listen to an artist, I'm kind of giving you that first person view of how you're feeling emotionally, how you're feeling mm -hmm. physically and stuff like that. And so when I discover a new artist or when I interview an artist, I try to capture them in ways that like ask the question of like, you know, when you were making this song, how do you feel emotionally? Where were you at emotionally? And usually nine times out of 10, an artist just reveals all of that. And then they talk about their work in ways that I would have never even known if I didn't ask that question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say like in terms of advice for artists preparing for interviews, um, I think some advice I have is A, to help manage nerves, maybe go and watch some other interviews that the interviewer has done. Like if maybe you're preparing to do an interview with me, maybe go back and watch some of my older interviews to kind of learn like what kind of questions I ask, how I talk, like just kind of what my energy is. Cause I did the same thing when I'm preparing to interview an artist. Like if I'm nervous, I'll watch some of their past interviews and be like, okay, let me catch their vibe. Let me see what their personality is like. And I think that can really help dull nerves. Um, I would also say going into an interview for artists, um, dive back into your lore, like go back through your camera roll, go back through old journal entries, like dive through your lore. And I think like really, uh, really like kind of rediscover, like, like you were saying day, like where you were at emotionally when you were creating the music, you're going to be talking about any interesting stories that you can relate to your music. Um, just like, cause I feel like we forget so much of our own stories. I think it's good. I think it, it's good advice to maybe like go back and like look through your own story and pick out things that you really think are important to share that you want people to know about you. That's my advice. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think going off of what Annabelle just said, um, remembering that to quell nerves, I would say remembering that we already secured the interview. Like you already did the hard part of opening up in your music and being vulnerable there. And you already secured the spot to like, talk with someone about it um so viewing it as more of an opportunity to just continue to do that um and yeah I would say like um in terms of like physical prep um just yeah I think diving back into your lore is is a great way of putting it um but yeah just like kind of remembering um I I like when people name drop in in interviews like if they are working with like a producer that they really liked um like making sure that you have all of the information of mm. who collaborated on it um because I think something that maybe doesn't come across as as well is if you don't have that stuff prepared um mm. because it is a collaborative effort most of the time. If it's not amazing, congratulations. Um, <laughs> but, but just like remembering those things as well. Oh yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. Again, I feel like there's, there's so much emphasis for you three on getting to the heart of who these artists are, what the details are around the creation process around um, shouting out people when, when need be, you know, like just making sure that like artists are both aware of themselves and aware of like the people that made them who they are. And I think that's really important. Um, and I'm, I'm also curious, uh, if you have any, uh, specific interviews or reviews that you've done that went super well, that you love to shout out, like as examples of how artists can come across well during interviews. 
Um, I chatted with Mini Trees, um, who's like an LA based kind of bedroom pop. Actually, she she she's coined living room pop. Um, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's just an interesting cool. like in between of like um, bedroom pop and a more produced type beat. Um, but yeah, chatting with her for sleeve notes, um, it was just super clear that she knew knew her shit. She was so on top of it, um, and yeah, I would say she was really prepared, um, just with learning the effort of her her craft um, and like being able to teach it in a really um, like not coming from mus- a musical background I there are a lot of things about like a lot of technical things that I don't understand um and so I really like when an artist is able to provide that sort of insight um and I think mm. she did it in a really interesting way during that conversation so the artist that I want to talk about um is this artist called Mason um you know what's cool about him especially is is that he he had the opportunity to talk to me two days before his color show, which first of all for me is kind of crazy because I reached out to him because I found his work way early in 2018 before a rabbit hole was even started, and I reached out to him because I saw that he had his colors performance and I was like all right well I figured I'll try but I wasn't expecting much and he reached out to me and you know like it was great but. One of the things that was so good was that it felt like he, like, it felt mutual. Like, I gave him answers, I gave him questions, and he gave me answers where we were just building off of each other. And so, mm. at first, it was like the air was a little bit like, like, sucky because, like, oh man, you know, I'm trying to feel him out while he's trying to feel me out. Cause that was like his second interview that he's done in his life, I believe. Oh, wow. And yeah. So that was crazy. And then, once we really got to talk, you know, um, I talked to him about, you know, some of his music that I love. But then we both kind of talked about, you know, how music can capture us emotionally in different ways, not just him as an artist, but me as a, you know, curator and all those things. And that was really something to experience for sure, because mm-hmm. once I saw him do his covers performance of Strawberry Privilege, I thought that was like really impactful. And I was like, mm-hmm. yo, like had a conversation with this guy two days ago and now he's doing a covers performance, which I thought was like super sick. That's awesome. Yeah, that's pretty legendary. Um, I have two great examples. First is this artist named Justice Xavier, um, who's a rapper out of New Jersey, um, out in New York all the time, does a lot of shows. And what I really liked about doing an interview with him is he spoke a lot like to his community um he has like a super 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 strong community especially like online like anytime we do a post related to him like the comment section is madness like he just gets so much support (laughs) and he really used the interview as an opportunity to speak directly to his fans to talk a lot about his relationship to his community um which was something that was just clearly really important to him and I thought that was super beautiful because he knew that the interview was a moment his fans would be excited about so he really took advantage of that and really use that time to like speak to his community and like continuously like thank them for supporting him, which I just think like him prioritizing that was super meaningful and super cool. Um, another interview that I really enjoyed doing was um, Lexa Gates, another artist out of New York. And I think what was really cool about doing an interview with her is she has this just like super hilarious like personality. Um, and she really just like let that shine throughout the interview. Like she wasn't like awkward or anything with presenting herself. It's it's kind of hard to explain, but she just has like this, this like super unique personality. She like invited me into her apartment too. So we were in her space and she was just like very herself and very open. And we were just sitting like crisscross applesauce on our couch. And um, yeah, she was just like, she was like doing that thing from the office where they break the fourth wall and make eye contact with the camera. <laughs> and it was just really hilarious. And there were just some like funny, funny moments full of personality. And I think like seeing an artist really be able to kind of like let go of their ego and just like really be themselves and just like show up and not be afraid to like be silly. Um, super fun. Made the interview feel like very authentic. That's so great, especially because I feel like since there's so much saturation in the music industry and just media in general, it's increasingly harder, I feel like, to just be yourself because there's so much competition and you can get judged and you can get, you know, flamed for stuff. And it's like, it is really refreshing to see people and artists who are just 
willing to put themselves out there and are standing on business and like what they believe in and, and who they are. And they're not dulling down their personality for anyone, you know? So now let's zoom out a bit and talk about artists, personal brands more generally. So it's kind of rare for an artist to do anything alone these days, you know, making friendships and connections in the industry is so important, which y'all have already talked about. And we actually had an artist guest blogger recently who said that her friends have been her biggest supporters in her career. And I thought that was really telling just as to where we are right now. And um, so kind of going beyond the music and understanding like how you move in social spaces, like shows, how you stay in touch with people, how you support other artists with all those things in mind, what do you feel like are the best ways for artists to come across well in their communities? And you know, if relevant, which artists have you seen do that most effectively? Mm, yeah. All right, um, first of all, I want to say that that is hard. That's very hard. Like, especially because everyone that I know are based in New York or Los Angeles. And for me to be based in the Bay Area, you know, it is hard for me to keep in touch. And it's hard for me to, like, kind of it's explore new artists. So I feel like the number one way that I'll say is really, really take chances. Like, sometimes you got to, like, take chances in order to like really kind of achieve what it is you want to do. Like if you want to connect with more, like if you find a producer that's like really sick and like you guys kind of built that connection, you know, like if you have the money to do it and if you have the execution of doing it, you know, fly out there and connect with people. That's one of the reasons why I'm going to Los Angeles like in June is because I'm really pulling that trigger for me to go ahead and create some connections on my own people that I have the opportunity to connect with. But also at the same time, I would say the important thing is just kind of like what we do is like form an online community. I feel like when artists form their own online community and they let their audience in and you see a lot of indie artists kind of like doing social media trends and kind of showcasing that fun side of their work. You know, when you kind of have that approach, then it's easier to build a stronger audience as well because mm -hmm. they're kind of capturing like the human side of you, which I think mm -hmm. is really important for an artist to have. Like when you capture more than just the artist side of your work, then everything else starts to blossom. All right. Right. I would say, yeah, in terms of showing up in community, whether that be online or like in person out and about in your own like artist community. Um, I mean, I would say just like, A, be a good person, like be kind to people, you know, like talk to people on a human level and don't immediately go like, so what do you do? Like, what can you do for me? You know, <laughs> like I think connecting on a human level first is so important because I know I can get kind of thrown off. It goes straight to like, hey, nice to meet you. Can you like promote my music? Like, I think whether you're talking to me or anyone else, like approaching someone on a human level first is so important. Just being kind um, and connecting with someone on that like interpersonal level before you get to like talking about what you do and what you can do for each other and stuff like that. Um, I would say, yeah, just like support your friends and support artists that you love. Um, even if of course your main mission is gonna be to get your music out there and further your career as an artist. Like it's so important to like show up to your friends' shows, like uh, buy tickets to their events, like do everything you can to show meaningful support to artists around you because that energy is gonna come back around. Mm -hmm. It also kind of ties it with my last point, which I think is like give more than you ask. Like I think mm. it's really easy to be in communities online or in person and be constantly, I think it's very important to ask for help and to like Day said, like go for the things you want. But um, I think giving back just as much or even more than you like ask for things is really, really important. Um, I think can just again, like showing support um, and giving as much as you can, giving back to your community is going to come back to you tenfold. Um, so yeah, that's my advice for maneuvering within your community. Mm -hmm. Bars, mm -hmm. bars. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> I concur 100%. I think it's, yeah, I love the idea of like giving more than you take, but also like asking what people need. Like mm. sometimes people don't know that you can, you can ask if people need anything and, and usually it's like super mutually beneficial. It's like, well, I want to put out a, like, I, I have a song coming out. I want to do a release show. Like, I would love for you to come by and we can 
throw a house party and we can both play and we can invite all of our friends, like just finding ways to build community. Um, I know day is said it was hard. Like it is hard if you're not like in New York or LA, but there are music scenes everywhere. Um, so showing up locally is like super, super important. Um, and then online, I would say just like, stay in people's dms like really in a big way you have to be staying in people's dms um i it i i get really self-conscious um about like dming people and just being like hey i really like your music or like hey like i would love to talk to you sometime about this but like then i remember that like we both we both need this like i i need to talk to them because i I had this innate urge to talk to them and they would probably <laughs> love to talk to me about it and like mm -hmm. share and like continue to like extend their platform. And you never know like who you talk to that knows someone that knows someone that whatever is able to really get your music seen. Um, so I would say just continuing to show up, even if it feels like you're annoying people or that people aren't, showing up for you in a big way um I but I understand that that can be so exhausting and as an artist you kind of have to wear like so many hats as it is um mm -hmm. and social media just being another one of them it can feel like a full-time job sometimes um but yeah I would say continuing to do that um and I like when artists have um like Annabelle I know you have you have a discord right mm -hmm. yeah I love when artists do that as well because um, that's such a great community building platform. Mm -hmm. um, and I think someone that I spoke to recently that has a really active one is Grace Gardner, um, who's like a Philly based singer songwriter. Um, and it's a great way to engage with like fans and other artists. And yeah, they do a lot of like songwriting workshops and stuff in there and it's just a great time. Yeah. Yeah. I would add to that too, Malia, when, when you were talking, I was just thinking about, the whole idea of reaching out to folks and that just sort of the fear of that, but also being able to push through that. And one of the things that I've learned um, as someone who's is also an artist, but working in the music industry as well is like, you know, a lot of times if you can push through that awkwardness or that fear, like you can make genuine friendships and make connections that last a really long time. And those can be super beautiful and meaningful, you know, whether you are, uh, connecting with someone in terms of like a producer or a collaborator, or you're just like going to each other's shows or whatever it is. Like, I think um, just being relationships oriented can be really helpful. So um, for the final question before our Q and A section, I just want to ask, um, what do you think the most important tip is that you would give to indie artists who want to have a strong personal brand and make a good impression on folks? I guess for me, I think uh, I think world building should always come first. That's always my number one tip. And I feel like I've exhausted that term. I feel like I talk about it in every interview and every conversation. <laughs> but I just I really think that uh, putting world building at the front of your operation as an artist is so incredibly important because it helps you communicate who you are as a person and as an artist to your fans it makes mm -hmm. your music more appealing. It makes your music more memorable. And when it comes to like building a personal brand, I really do think um, it is all about the world you build, around, you build around yourself. There's so many ways to express yourself um, as an artist outside of just the music itself when it comes to building your world. So I think, yeah, having that attention to detail, taking a good amount of time to like plan and just be really intentional with how you build your world. Like that is my number one, number one um, piece of advice. And I would also say, you know, just like study artists um, who you look up to who are great at world building, like people like Tyler, the creator, you know, like I think like number one example of an artist who's like amazing at world building, like uh, take advice from the greats, look at what they do and look at how you can apply that to your own work world building always number one well said always um the number one thing that i really look for and i think artists should like focus on is focus on the small things so, like focus on the small details not just in your work but how you present yourself like for example when you have when you have a show you know one of the things that i really look for is is like i check out their body language i check out their tone like 
For example, I can tell with the more energetic artists, their jaws are a lot more like clenched, but at the same time, they're using a lot of muscles in their body that kind of has to show like their high face energy. Like for example, when I saw Jordan Ward in Berkeley, uh, one of the things, first of all, he is all voice, but another thing that I noticed is that his energy was so high, even though his music is like super chill. But that's the thing about it is that he knows how to bring an audience in because he focused so much on the small details. Mm. And so when you focus on the small details, I mean, like, for everything. Like, when you when you make a music video, you got to think about, like, who you feel like will fit each person down to your creativity. Like, not just from your director, but from your producer to your colorist, like mm -hmm. everything, mm -hmm. every small little detail matters because like, if you really want to make it work, you don't have to focus on those small little details. And you know, like what Annabelle said about world building and how like you have to look up to some of your grades. It's the same thing that can be applied to focusing on the small little details. Like for example, um, I will always say for me, Amine is the artist that does the small details, right? Because the way he presents himself and the way that each work is composed, like you can just mm -hmm. tell from start to finish that like he executes his sound in such a detailed way that really goes beyond music. Like if you notice him, he's involved with fashion and he kind of mm -hmm. has like a morale type of vibe where like it can open up new doors for your work because you focus on those small little details. And mm. I think that's like the number one important thing that I recommend to artists is if you really want to be successful and you really want to like take your music beyond to a new level, then focus on small details. It'll last a long time. Fantastic. Totally. Yeah. Um, I think going off of that and what Annabelle said, um, I think it's really important when artists stand on something like, um, being able to be engaged in, in, in your art and then also like the surrounding culture of it. Mm -hmm. Um, so just paying attention to what's going on in the world and how you play a part in that, um, is really important. And I think art is a extension of truth. Um, and like truth telling is so important within art and it's how we communicate. Um, so I think on a holistic level, I, I read a really good excerpt from an essay from um, the author Mimi Zhu um, titled uh, like against bourgeois art, um, which relates like on a holistic level, but more immediately accessible, I would say is just the idea that like art is truth telling. And if an artist's goal is anything other than telling their truth and what that means to them, um, then they've kind of like lost the plot um, and you kind of have to just go back to the basics and be like, why am I doing what I'm doing? And if you are able to come to an answer in that, finding a way to platform that is actually, it, it is simpler than it seems. Like you just express mm -hmm. what it is that you want to express. Um, mm -hmm. And that's how good art is made, I would say. Yes. Oh, man. The beautiful answers. Loved all of those. Uh, so to wrap things up today, I wanted to engage all of our audiences and ask them what they'd like to learn from you. So we're just going to go around for each person and just have um, uh, Annabelle first answer a question from that good shits audience and go around. So uh, there's a question that here, how do I balance authenticity and being marketable? What would you say to that, Annabelle? Yeah, I think that um, those two concepts can seem like at odds at times, you know, because I think like, especially with how uh, social media driven marketing music is there's this idea that you kind of have to like act a certain way or like be a certain person in order to be marketable and I feel like artists hear this all the time but it, I really do feel like being your most authentic self is like your most marketable self I feel like when you're presenting your truest self it like uh it attracts people who are looking for someone just like you. And that's the beauty of um, social media and like the way it works right now, especially TikTok is like um, your social media is going to recommend you content 
that it knows you're going to like. And so like this, social media is already feeding you directly to people who are looking for someone just like you, mm-hmm. which I think is a really, a really beautiful thing um, about how it's functioning right now. So yeah, I would say authenticity and marketability are not at odds. I think they're actually incredibly interwoven. And I think the, the more you know yourself and the more you're able to openly communicate and express who you are, um, the more appealing you're going to be to your audience. Because also like people can sense authenticity. Like you can sense when an artist is being themselves or when they're trying to act a certain way in order to market themselves. Um, so yeah, I would say like the two concepts are not at odds. They're like very much kind of, I don't know, I think the more authentic you are to yourself and the more... Um, you do things that you think are dope for you and for nobody else like people in turn will see that and be like oh that's super cool because they're being exactly themselves Um, I think a great example of this is artists like uh, Rico Nasty I think that like um, I did an interview with her recently and I was like you've been so ahead on so many waves and you've done so many like cool sounds and things before they were popular like how does that feel and she was like Kind of like you said earlier, she's like, I just like stand on it. Like if I think something is cool, I don't ask for anyone's permission. If I want to do something, I don't ask if anyone else likes it. Like I'm going to do it. And um, we've seen how like her appeal is just like in how how herself she is and how strong her sense of self is. So I think a lot of artists can should look to people like that. Just being like, do whatever you think is cool. Be whoever you want to be. And then your audience is going to think that's cool because you think it's cool. Long winded answer, but that's my answer. (laughs) Really good answer. Thank you. Thank you. And we also have one from uh, a rabbit's hole. Someone asked uh, you, Day, any tips on time management while wearing many hats as an artist? Uh, Time management. Um, Interesting question. Dang, got me on edge there. Um, (laughs) I'll say with time management, I feel like people can incorporate time management in so many different ways. Um, I'll say one of the first things that's important is, and you know, you may not like it, other people may not like it, but start to become a morning person, like really and truly be a morning person. Like you gotta wake up early for your dreams. You gotta wake up early for what it is you want to achieve. And so when you're juggling many hats at once, when you're both a creative and a professional, you know, Sometimes there don't have to be times that you don't have to wake up. Like instead of waking up at like 8 a.m., you're not to wake up at like 6.30 a.m. Because, you know, you have something that you want to achieve. You have something that you want to do, you know. At the end of the day, you got to realize the importance of your art. And, you know, like what you're doing could take you that much further. Like not just as an artist, but as a creative as well. Like for me, I wake up at 6.30 a.m. every day. You know, that's what I got accustomed to. It used to be a time when I wake up at 5 a.m. just so that way I could beat the sun and get to work, you know? That's just kind of how I live my day-to-day life because truth to be told, you know, what I'm doing and how I'm going about it is something that I really add importance to, you know? Like, at the end of the day, for me, it's like I don't make much profit from a rabbit hole, but the profit I do make is forming a community and really just mm-hmm. kind of like focusing on building that community and to Create to have time management skills is very important, but I feel like the most important thing is waking up early and really kind of find that even middle where you focus your value on your mental health as well. Um, that's something that gets overlooked a lot. It's like we always focus on the grind and we always focus on getting things done, but there's got to be an even middle on that mm-hmm. where maybe you give yourself an hour to just kind of reset because I know too many artists who get overworked. Like there's a lot of artists who get overworked because either they feel like they're behind on the clock because, you know, sometimes we always say to ourselves, like, if we're not doing anything, then, you know, like, that's kind of like a waste of production. But deep down, it's like you're giving your chance to reset. And I think resetting is the most important thing to have as well. It's, it's probably the it's probably the most important thing to have. Because like when you're able to just reset, then I mean, you start forming new ideas and you're able to just kind of like, get 100% juice again. But um, the last thing I'll say about time management is is really just kind of like knowing when to rest, like physically, mm-hmm. like really be strict on your sleep schedule. Like, and, and I know like I sound like a military drill sergeant, but the <laughs> nicer form, I sound like the lo-fi military drill sergeant. But like, you know, I feel like when you incorporate 
a lot of different details into what it is you want to do or how you live your day-to-day life, man, you know, when you start to juggle many hats at once, it won't feel that way because you're, you're focused on every little detail as I keep on emphasizing for some reason. That's just kind of the focal piece for me today, I guess. But yeah, that's my advice. As someone who struggles to wake up early and calls herself an aspiring morning person, that really hits. Like I need to be up and at them. My name <laughs> it's is going to take some time, but yeah. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so this is a question for Malia. What's the best way to stay updated in terms of changes on social engagement when it comes to being an artist in the space and understanding how to really find your audience? Totally. Yeah, that's a great question. And I, I, I would like to continue to find the answer with you. Um, <laughs> but I think um, some of it has to do definitely with like, um, being an active, I, I know, I feel like I continue to say this, but being an active member in your community as an artist, and just like talking with other artists about like what they're experiencing on social media. Because um, I think there, there are like pendulum swings where it's like, you can really hit the algorithm and like something big breaks and and then it's crickets for like months. Um, and I think that that's just kind of the uh, current space we live in, um, especially like on something like a platform like TikTok. Um, but I s- would say that there are like social media management tools that are super helpful, like um, – Sprout Social and Hootsuite. Um, And I think both of them have blogs. Um, I know Hootsuite does about um, just just like more so of like tips on how to continue to um, find engagement on social media um, that can be super applicable for artists. I think ultimately it does go back to kind of what Annabelle was saying when she was answering her question about just like maintaining authenticity um because you can do all of this and then it not feel like there's any substance to it um from an audience perspective um or a tastemaker's perspective because um it just feels kind of shallow and like you're putting on something um so yeah ultimately at the end of the day it is about maintaining authenticity yeah I feel like it can be tricky sometimes to really maintain a balance there because I do feel like it's helpful to learn like, oh, this video format is working really well on TikTok. Maybe I could try that in a way that feels authentic to me. But you don't want to go so far in that direction that you're just doing stuff that doesn't even really resonate with you or feel fun, you know? So I think there's, you can definitely like figure out how to split a difference in a way that works for you personally, because that's that amount is going to be different for each person. So definitely hear you on that. And then to wrap things up, we do have a question from the CD Baby audience as well that anyone is welcome to answer. Feel free to just shout out if you want to take this one. Um, What are some tips you suggest to remain productive and consistent when it comes to building your personal brand? Staying up to date on the news. Sorry. I (laughs) I hate to be like, you have to read the news, but you do have to kind of maintain a level of understanding of what's happening in music business, I would say. Um, I think Billboard does a good job of having music news um, and United Musicians and Allied Workers. Their Instagram is a really good resource. It's U-M-A-W. Um, yeah, I'd second that. Yeah. I'd follow them. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, thanks to all of you for your time today. This has been incredibly informative for me as an artist and marketer, and I'm sure the rest of the audience will concur as well. So please follow Annabelle, Day, and Malia on their social media platforms, which are going to be linked in the description. And you can check out anything that we talked about today during this episode uh, in the description as well. Um, So thanks, y'all. Hope you have a great day. See you in the next episode. Peace. Thank you. Thank you. Adios. Thank you.